I watch your cupcake cam, mm -hmm. and I'm actually shocked that it's calorie-free cupcakes. That's right. Actually, I have to say, of all cupcakes, these are worth it. These, you actually taste all the ingredients in them. And as I was saying backstage, uh, you really taste the difference. So everything's fresh in our bakery. We bake from scratch. And I think that the cupcake cam, mm -hmm. like you mentioned, is a great way for our customers or fans to just get a really inside look at the bakery. You can see us cracking the eggs, pouring the milk in, you know, mixing the red velvet batter, and how everything's done every morning from scratch. Are people surprised that you actually are, like, legit making cupcakes? I, I think <laughs> do they, they think, like, robots do I, it? I, I think they are kind of sometimes shocked because our cupcake cam is... 24 hour seven, so you can log in at two in the morning, six in the evening, any time of day, and you can see like the first batter go in around 1 a.m. The first, you know, the mixer goes on, the butter goes in, and I think people are, are a little startled because like, wow, like people are actually doing this because you rarely get an inside look at restaurants. I think mm. I'm pretty sure ours is the first only 24 seven live stream into a food operation. And at first when we started, we were scared. We're like, are we ready to kind of open up our whole entire bakery 24 seven to the entire world? But people really do care about where their food comes from and how it's made. And for us, it is the ultimate level of transparency in food preparation because our customers can see every single step of the process. They can see, like Catherine said, mm -hmm. the, mix, the ingredients going into the mixer, the cupcakes being frosted and decorated. Mm -hmm. They can actually see them being packed. So what customers are ordering. And it, we screw up. It's not, we're not perfect. <laughs> In the cupcake cam, you can see when there's drama, when you see a customer's finger pointing <laughs> and there's some switching around and things like that. Like things go wrong. You'll see smashed cupcakes. And, and that's part of running a bakery, running a business. And so we love being able to share that totally unfiltered look um, with our fans. You guys had very, 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 very different mm -hmm. careers before mm -hmm. you became bakers. Right. Yeah. So for each of you, what was the aha moment in which you said, I don't want to work in investment banking anymore. I don't want to work in fashion anymore. Yeah. So we're sisters, and we grew up baking with our grandmother, who was an immigrant from Greece, and she baked everything from scratch. So the love of baking started since we were children. And we had this dream of opening a bakery, and our parents who were immigrants from Greece said, absolutely not. We didn't come to this country, so you can go backwards and work in a bakery. People in our country are trying to you know, work for a big company or become a doctor or a lawyer. And so they discouraged us early on not to go into the business. Um, but we still had this love for baking, and Sophie was working in venture capital, I was working in fashion, and it wasn't until we realized, you know what, we're going to wonder what if our entire lives, mm -hmm. we've always wanted to do this, and if we don't do it now, we're going to always wonder what would have happened. So, you know, we had very, very low expectations for ourselves. You know, when we first started, we said, listen, all we have to do is do what we love. As long as we can pay the rent in our small little bakery, you know, we'll be happy. Everything else is variable. You know, yeah. the ingredient costs or whatever. As long as we can make yeah. the rent, we'll be fine. That, that aha moment and that decision, that whole process of deciding to take that plunge to become an entrepreneur is really one of the scariest decisions any entrepreneur makes. Because in our case, um, and for a lot of people, they're giving up something very stable and known mm -hmm. for the complete unknown. And if you really think about it logically and like write out the pros and cons, there's absolutely no logical reason you should want to start a business. When you really write, lay it all down on paper and knowing what we know now. And I think part of the fun of starting a business at a young age too is you're a little bit naive because you just plow right in. And I think you really do need to just jump right in and start swimming. Because if you really try to be uh, pragmatic about it, um, you, you, won't, you would never do yeah. it. And I think um, looking back, um, Will we have started decision. George on Cupcake now? Knowing what we know now? Probably not. Yeah. You wouldn't? No. I mean, it's, it's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. And I think when, you, an entrepreneur, when you're an entrepreneur, it is relentless. It's 24-7. And I think a lot of people don't realize that. I think a lot of people um, want to start a business, but they really don't understand the sacrifice involved. And I think sometimes it can be very lonely because we miss out on a lot of family events and things that are... Um, friends are doing because your and big days are the same. Yeah. Yes, are, yes, Christmas, and so New yes, Year's, and those days Valentine's we're all working. Day. And so there's yeah. a, there's a, definitely sacrifices you make. But when you have a passion for something, and I think that's what's mm -hmm. really important. Is that when you start a business and um, you want to you you decide to become an entrepreneur, you really need to be passionate mm -hmm. about what you're doing. Because mm -hmm. if you don't have that passion, like the, it is not for the faint of heart. It's the days are long and hard. Made us cry. Yeah, yeah <laughs> it, 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 it tests you, and it really is um, a 24/7 commitment. And you have to love what you do. Mm -hmm. Well, my friend's brother has a restaurant in San Francisco, and he's mm -hmm. taken two days off for the birth yeah. of each of his children. And that's yeah. it, because yeah, he's absolutely. like, I can't trust anyone yeah. else. Like, yeah. if I, I'm not yeah. there, yeah. the quality goes down. Yeah. Yeah. 
So, I mean, have you guys found a balance of some sort? Because yes. Because you do have stores in a lot of places. Yes, and I think for us, when we decided to open in New York City, that was like the first big scary moment for us because we couldn't physically be in both of our locations at the same time. And now we have locations in LA, Boston, Atlanta, um, and we ship nationwide. So we have a, another shipping facility near um, Dallas Airport in DC um, where we just bake for shipping, and that's a big operation in and of itself. And I think once we opened New York, we realized you got, we have to have great people who share our passion. Um, and really, in my old job, we used to say, great people build great companies, and it's very, very true. Mm -hmm. You need to hire people who are as passionate, mm -hmm. um, and who have as much energy, and who are excited but about the But that being product. said, we're yeah. there all the yeah. time. I mean, we were just in New York yesterday, we back in, no, we were in New York Monday through Wednesday, yeah. down in DC yesterday, Thursday, and now we're back in New York. Yeah. So it's a lot of travel, and yeah. we, we get down in the weeds, and we're, we're there every and day. I, I, you're I, sitting there, you'll sit there and, and mix and yeah. break the eggs. Yeah, and I think that is the key to being an on, a really successful uh, entrepreneur, that it's not about sitting behind a desk and a computer and kind of um, mm -hmm. dictating orders to everyone. It is about leading by example, and get, like Catherine said, we love to get in the weeds, mm -hmm. because that's when we're at the best. When you have your pulse on what's going on at your business at the ground level, that's when, that's when you do well. And I think we love spending time when we're in each of our stores talking to our customers. And sometimes our customers are freaked out, like, why are you packing my cupcakes? Is that you packing my cupcakes? And I love to see what they're ordering, where, ask them where they're from. I make com a conversation. I think when you get to know your customers, at that level, it, it, it really, there, that's like you're are, are oh, on, the, right. on, on the um, ground. Um, it may, helps us make better business decisions. So I think it's really important for entrepreneurs to do that. Two-fold question for you guys. One, how did you come up with your first cupcake recipe that you mm -hmm. knew was going to be a mass seller and would work? And two, how do you come up with these variations for specific holidays? And you guys have some very, very cool, like, mint cupcakes that you don't see a lot of places. Yep. So how do you, so actually threefold question. Right. Sure. So let's start with your basic recipe. So the basic recipe is really our grandmother's recipes. and Really? So, yes. And so she had amazing cake recipes. And she was the inspiration behind, you know, starting Georgetown Cupcake. And so we really wanted to use all of her basic cake recipes to open. And we've sort of just, to answer the second question too, well, to answer the first question, it's our grandmother's recipes. But when we were kids, we didn't have access to the very best ingredients. You know, we didn't have Valrhona cocoa. I'm sure we used a generic cocoa powder back then. And we didn't have great butter. And I'm sure we used like an artificial uh, vanilla extract. So we sort of used that core recipe and just amped it up using fantastic ingredients and like fresh produce. And then just to tweak it from there, you know, we would add a little bit of lemon zest and then, you know, and add some lemon juice, fresh lemon juice. And there was a or lemon diced blossom. Strawberries or, diced strawberries. Diced strawberries. Or, you know, some cinnamon apple for our caramel apple. But I think for us, um, in cr creating our menu, that's actually one of the most fun parts of the job. If we could just do that all day, that would yeah. be the best because we get to experiment and, and it's like doing R&D and you get to mm -hmm. taste test too, so it's delicious. But we try to let the seasons inspire us. So, you know, in the fall, it's all about pumpkin spice and pumpkin cheesecake um, and maple chocolate chip. And then in December, we have, you know, gingerbread and white mm -hmm. chocolate peppermint. Um, and in February, we've got all kinds of like strawberries um, flavors. And I think for us, um, we really try to capture the season and also our personal events in life and our own personal um, uh, travels um, influence our menu development. Like Catherine became obsessed with dulce de leche on a trip to Argentina. And so that kind of influenced our salted caramel okay. cupcake. And then I created our lavender old gray, which is a spring flavor. And it's actually a cult favorite of our customers. <laughs> and that was, I made that for Catherine's bridal shower because I wanted to create something special. Um, and she loves that lavender old gray tea. So I created a tea infused cupcake. And now it is literally one of the best-selling spring flavors of Georgetown Coffee. People email us all the time saying, please add this to the year-round menu. So for us, it's actually a challenge to remove flavors and, ah. and to add flavors because some people have their you know, favorites, and people get very, very emotional about their flavors. And that's something I actually didn't, we didn't realize when we started mm -hmm. Georgetown Cupcake, that customers become so passionate about certain yeah. flavors. We actually got rid of our chocolate banana uh, flavor, <laughs> which we had at the very beginning. It was on Thursdays. It wasn't a hugely popular flavor, and so we had to get, make room mm -hmm. for new flavors. And we got a long email from a customer, it was probably like two or three pages long, about how chocolate banana was there for her at all these points in, in her, her life. life. It was her Twitter, her Twitter profile was chocolate bananas only on Thursdays. And like she like <laughs> her life, like she and she was so devastated that we removed chocolate banana. And so like, you don't realize like some people have these like they're so passionate about certain flavors and we're like, oh we're just gonna take it off the menu. And so people become very, very sensitive to that. And so we never thought that would happen when we started the bake. We're like, okay, well we'll do chocolate vanilla red velvet. People are fine with anything. No, that is not so. When we run out of a flavor, if someone comes in and they want a strawberry out of strawberry and that's their favorite 
it all hell breaks loose sometimes. <laughs> like it can get you pretty. You better go back there and start yes. messing up yeah. the strawberries, is <laughs> what you're saying. Yes. yes. Speaking of, let's put everyone to work. Sure. Yeah. So today we're going to show you um, some fun decorating tips for Halloween. Um, Catherine's actually going to demonstrate a, a really creepy gravestone parfait. Yes. Oh, um, by the way, look how simple this is. It's yes. Like a bag with it the, is. It's like a freezer bag. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. So we always tell people if you're baking at home, um, you don't necessarily have to have all the fancy piping tips mm -hmm. and tools. We actually use a standard round tip at our bakery. We frost all of our cupcakes with what we call the signature swirl. It's a very kind of um, simple. Um, but, um, you know, uh, elegant look to, mm -hmm. to the cupcakes, not too frilly or anything. And we use this for all of our cupcakes. So, and if you don't have a tip like this at home, you can take a freezer bag, like Catherine said, and snip off the tip, mm -hmm. and it'll work just as well. But, so, so we're going to do, and you can help me, we're going to start yes. with a gravestone parfait. And this is like a really fun Halloween dessert. Uh -huh. If you're having a Halloween party at home, a dinner party, and you want to serve dessert to your guests, this is a really cool, creepy way uh -huh. to do it. So what I have here is some white chocolate bones. And they're like skeleton bones, and they're really easy to make. And what you want to do is just get some white chocolate. You can find these um, chocolate molds at any craft store, like Michael's yeah, yeah. and the baking aisle. And you just melt on the white chocolate, put it on, pour it in, let it harden, use, pop like, it out. I assume you use the real white chocolate, not the crap that they sell in those. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Calibo. We use Calibo. Calibo white chocolate. Calibo white chocolate's great. great. But, you know, you can find it at Sur La Table. I mean, there's so many specialty yep. stores now. You can get great white chocolate. Yep. So we're going to take a hand, handful yep. of so bones. Yep, so take your handful okay. of bones, and you're going to put the, the bones, the white chocolate bones, on the bottom of your parfait dish so okay. that you're going to find out that when your guests reach the bottom of the grave, they're going to hit bones. Surprise. Yeah, <laughs> pretty creepy, right? And then we're going to take some crushed cookies, Oreo cookies, and you're going to take a little and sprinkle so it. Right yeah. <laughs> you're going to sprinkle some dirt on top of those bones. Oh, yep. Oh. There you go. It's a graveyard. It's a yes. graveyard, absolutely. Right. We're making a, a grave. So just yes. take some of okay. that. And then kind of gross, but like no, it's, it's awesome. So, yeah. In a good way though. Yeah. And so this is actually a milk buttercream frosting. Milk what I've milk chocolate. And what I've done is I've added um, Oreo crumble into it too. So it's we call this our midnight cookies and cream at the bakery. And we're just gonna make a little dollop like that. Okay. So you can just make it and this this is a great because you don't have to be an expert piper. Perfect. Whoops, sorry. That's great. Yeah. yeah. Um, and because it gets a little Yours messy. This looks so much better. <laughs> it's, okay, it's, a, you, it's, it's all going to get smushed down, so oh, it doesn't matter. So you're going to okay. you're going to unwrap your cupcake. You're going to rip it in half from top to bottom okay. like that, half, yeah. and then you're going to put down one end and push it down. You're going to add a little bit more cookie crumble on top, okay. around the edge there, and then you're going to okay. take your frosting, add a little bit more frosting, and then you're going to take the top. You're going to put it down, push it down like that. Perfect. There you go. Nice. There we go. And then you're going to add a little bit more on the top like this. Wow. Just to cover, yep, up just the to cover it. And it's then you're okay, going to take your cookie up. crumble and you're going to pat it down Perfect. on the top like this. And this is actually going to make the top of the grave stone, so the dirt where the grave is. Okay. And then just kind of pat it down. It, it stays quite nicely on. Can't really sticks on quite nicely. Perfect. <laughs> and there's Pat, Pat. Yeah, yeah Pat this down. Is my yeah. Bakery and yeah. I don't. You're, you're doing a great job. And then, okay. so what I have here is some green buttercream, and I have a multi hole tip. You can also find this in the bakery aisle, and it makes wonderful grass. So, what you're going to do is you're going to take small strokes. Oh my God, that's so cool. And yep. you're going to make a little grass. Just like that. Will you do mine? Yes, yeah, absolutely. I'll, I can, so people do yours. I can do yours. And I'm going to show you how to make the gravestone next. And everything, what's so great about this is that everything is edible. So you can eat all of this. Um, the gravestones are really, really easy to make. We have gray fondant here. You can find gray, you know, white fondant. Add a little bit of black food coloring to make a nice gray color. You're going to yeah, roll it out. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. okay. You're going to roll <laughs> out your gray fondant. And nowadays you can find gravestone mini cookie cutters in the baking aisle of any of these craft stores. Okay. But if you don't, you can always use an oval and cut off the bottom. It makes a great gravestone. It looks like this. And a cool trick is taking an uninked stamp pad. So you can find this in an office supply store, uninked stamp pad. Take some black food coloring, squirt it in the stamp pad. Use a glove, just kind of like rub it in a little bit. And using rubber stamps, to stamp rest in peace, RIP, and stamping it into the fondant gravestone. Yeah. I made some that say dig in, so your guests can actually dig into the grave. Yes, and you're gonna yes. put it right on top like that. Oh my God, this is amazing. Yeah. So your guests can kind of just 
dig in for dessert, and once yeah. they finish and they reach the bottom, they're going to hit the actual white, white chocolate. <laughs> so, don't tell them about the white chocolate bones, though, because they'll be really creeped out yes. when they see them. You can, you can <laughs> see like, it on the bottom. Uh, yeah. A little surprise for your yeah. guests. And if you don't want something quite so creepy, and something a little more generic or to do with mm -hmm. your kids or... Um, uh, friends for a uh, uh, decorating you do party. worms. Well, yeah, so we're, we're going to show you how to make a witch face and a cat face. Okay, okay so for the... Um, you know what? While we do this, let's have our audience ask some questions so we can talk and decorate at the same time. Like, you're a pro. Look at you. You could do like this that, like yeah. blindfolded, right? Well, I mean, we frosted probably... I don't know if I've frosted a million cupcakes in my lifetime so far, but maybe close to it. <laughs> Okay, and so we've got some sanding sugar. Do you want to, you can do the witch face. So we can cover her with some sanding sugar. Do I just like dip it in like that? Yep, exactly, yep. yep. Or you can sprinkle it on top, whatever. But okay. I'm going to put some like this. And I'm going to do a cat face. I'm going to cover this with black. Question, please? Yeah, hey, I love your dresses. And oh, I nice. wanted to ask how you guys ended up teaming up with Bethany Frankel and the Real Housewives of New York. So she actually lives um, in that neighborhood in Soho that we um, have our bakery in. And she comes in yeah. and orders she's cupcakes. Like, she likes her cupcakes. She likes her cupcakes. And I believe her daughter had a birthday party in the Soho Bakery, too, um, for one of her birthdays. And I think that, um, you know, they come and get cupcakes for special events. And they, I, th I think they asked if they could film in the shop for a scene for, I think you're referring to the Real Housewives of New York scene where they were decorating? Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. So, and I think they filmed a scene um, there where they were decorating but it was, it was really fun. It was a great time, right, Sophie? It yeah, was, it was a fun. It was fun. We love. It's, it's so cool to see who comes into the bakery. Yeah. And when we started Georgetown Cup, we didn't realize like all who would stop in. And like we've had all kinds of celebs come in, politicians, like sports stars. It's kind of it's kind of cool. Who's yeah. been the craziest celebrity that's come in and then that, that surprised you by being a fan? You know, Sasha Obama. So we actually had her. Oh, okay. Yeah, we actually okay. had her. I totally did not. Yeah, I, and it really did. Because so they, they had someone call over to the bakery, and she wanted to celebrate her, her 10th birthday. This is her 10th oh. birthday at the bakery. And we had no idea that, like, you know, she watched the show or she loved her cupcakes. But we ended up having a decorating party for her. Her sister was there, her friends. Um, and we baked cupcakes and frosted cupcakes with her for, on her birthday, which was really cool. Yeah. And that's probably got to be one of the coolest um, people that, to come into the bakery, but we've had everyone from Jennifer Garner to LeBron James mm -hmm. to um, you know Nancy Pelosi comes in. John, John Kerry was one of our one first, of our first very customers. First customers yeah. Georgetown. Uh, John Kerry was one of your first. Oh customers. yeah, and he still is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he lives in Georgetown. Um, who else, Sophie? We've had. A um, she's actually really good at spotting the celebs. Yeah. <laughs> Catherine has celebrity radar, so when she, they come in, she knows immediately when they when they come in. Right. But um, it's it's fun because like, you don't realize like. Who, you know, who loves cupcakes? And like, it's interesting to see what flavors they get too. Most people though are tend to get like the classics, like red velvet, mm -hmm. vanilla, um, and chocolate. But um, I'm trying to think of anyone else that's really. Um, hmm, who else? There was someone else who just. Usher comes into our Atlanta shop. Oh, yeah, um, Usher came in. That's cool. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> really, our staff love it. It's a lot of fun. Um, so I'm doing. Oh, Reese Witherspoon with yep. another one. Yep. yep. Um, so for my cat, so I'm just finishing up the cat face yes. here. So I put some um, black sanding sugar. I've got two fondant eyes. I use this little German berry candy for its nose mm -hmm. and a licorice bit for its tongue. And then I'm going to put in two ears. Ooh, I like that mouth right there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so this is actually a fun idea if you're having a Halloween party this weekend mm -hmm. to take some Halloween candy, chop it all up, um, and have your friends do like a cupcake decorating bar for dessert. So, you know, you have all this candy lying around. Mm -hmm. You can make it interactive. Yeah. You have fun decorating their own dessert. And night nice trick, too, is to take black licorice, cut it on really steep angles, and you can, like, make angry eyebrows. Oh, that's really cool. Witch, just like that. And this is actually like, by the way, I just want to add really good quality candy. Like yeah. this isn't crap. So. <laughs> uh, next question, please. Hi, ladies. I just want to know what's, what are some mistakes to avoid when baking for the first time? Sure. Oh, there are some yeah. good ones. So I think one of the uh, major mistakes that a lot of people make is that they tend to overmix their cupcake batter. The only time you really should have your mixer on high is when you're creaming the butter and the sugar. And that's the only time you can really have your mixer on high. After that, always keep it on low. Because when you mix it on, so what you're doing, Sophie's actually the molecular biology major, <laughs> so she, she loves to explain this part, but when you're, when you're creaming the butter and sugar, you're actually cutting, the sugar crystals are actually cutting air pockets, bubbles into the butter. And that's what's gonna make your cupcake light and fluffy. Those are what's going to rise in the oven. And if you kind of spin your mixer on high and, you know, throw all your ingredients on top, 
you're going to collapse all those bubbles. And that's how it comes out dense. So yes. if you want light and fluffy cupcakes, make sure to always keep your mixer on low mm -hmm. after you cream your butter and sugar. That can be on, the only time it can be on hot. And, and another thing um, people tend to do is overbake. Um, you, know, you, you never want to bite into like a bone dry cupcake. And mm -hmm. when you take them out of the oven, the cupcakes will continue to bake in the pan. So um, when you think you've got about a minute left, take them out and let them continue to bake in the pan and they'll become just right. We always try to err on the side of slightly under baking just because they will continue mm -hmm. to bake while they're in the pan cooling. And what, uh, I mean, I know you have the two cookbooks, but just offhand, like what is it? 20 minutes at 375 or? Yeah, most, yeah. most of our flavors are anywhere between 15 to 20 minutes, depending on the flavor, mm -hmm. at um, 350. Um, and the thing about our cookbooks, we use all-purpose flour for everything. So I know people sometimes get discouraged when they look at recipes and they're like, pastry flour, you know. Uh, and all the all same th thing. Well, there's a different um, gluten content. So I mean, they're slightly different, but we've made our recipes so they all use mm -hmm. all-purpose. And it's super easy because so these are things that you have in your pantry. You don't have to go out and get, you know, special types of flour and really specialty ingredients. Although um, gluten-free baking is definitely popular nowadays. When we started Georgetown Cupcake, it was not, you know, on really anyone's radar. Um, but you can get gluten-free all-purpose flour in the supermarket now in the mm -hmm. baking aisle. So it's very easy. You can just do a one-to-one -one substitution. So any recipe that you have for cakes, cupcakes, or anything at home, and you want to make it gluten-free, you can just buy the gluten-free flour, and it makes it really easy. And last question, please. Hey, you two. I had a cupcake earlier. It was off the chain. You got a new, you got a new customer for <laughs> Off life. the chain. Off the chain. Uh, <laughs> so I'm curious, as entrepreneurs, what was the biggest obstacle that you two had to overcome in order to get to the top? You know, I think in the beginning, it was access to capital. So when we started, it was 2008. It was the beginning of the recession. No banks were lending. And that was right when we quit our jobs <laughs> to start Georgetown Cup. So our parents were thrilled. So, <laughs> so um, it was a very scary time. And, you know, we didn't let it deter us. We were like, you know, we're still going to do this. And we ended up uh, um, maxing out our personal credit cards and, and using up any life savings that we had time, which is very unconventional. I wouldn't recommend it nowadays yeah. to anybody. Because it's not it a great, great way to start a business. It's but not. when you don't have any other options and you have all these people telling you no, you just have to find a way to get to yes. So that's why I said at the beginning, if you if we – really thought about it now, would we have taken the plunge and started? Maybe not if we knew how hard it was going to be because it is. It's when you're an entrepreneur and you have this great idea, and I forget who said this quote, I'm not going to take credit for it, but they said the best ideas sometimes die in bank parking lots. And it is sad, but it's true because people have great ideas and they just can't get the capital, or they can't get their idea off the ground because it costs money. And I think um, when you're starting a business for us, we found a way to really start in a bootstrap fashion. Like our first shop, was so small. It was very like ramshackle. People came in like, what is this place? And I think maybe that was part of the charm in the beginning. So these two crazy sisters, this place looks like a dollhouse. Like we literally <laughs> put in the counters ourselves and everything. It was not fancy by any means. But, you know, we were baking cupcakes from scratch and they could smell them being baked. And we were there and we were like covered in flour and sugar and they could tell that these were fresh. And so I think if you have a dream, the, the message is just go for it. And there are going to be a lot of obstacles and a lot of people telling you no, but just find a way to get Take a yes. Thank you guys so much. But before we go, tell us the name of your books. Sure. Um, we've we've got, got two of them. Yes, The Cupcake Diaries and Sweet Celebrations. And you can check out our live Cupcake Cam, um, tlc.com slash Cupcake Cam, 24-7 cupcakes. You can look in the fridge. Yeah. You can look at, we have the fridge cam. There's a, a mixer cam. The cam. There's a frosting. You can see them fighting. Cam. Yes, yes, you can. You can see can. everybody. <laughs> you can hang out in the fridge. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> yeah.